we've made three major updates to state management. So let me tell you what they are and show you practical examples of both how to use them and how it changes your design system. First, you can now access the widget state of widgets inside a component from the page the component is on. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, in modern app development, you design with components, reusable blocks like buttons, carousels, and form elements that make it so you don't have to design the same thing multiple times. Now, there are around 20 widgets with widget states. All of these, before this update, you couldn't access those widget states outside of the components. So that means that if you needed those widget states, they couldn't be in components, so you would have to rebuild those widgets every time you need them. For instance, let's say you've got a component right here with an email and password field. And let's say you had three pages where you were gonna use this on your sign up, login, and reset password pages. So I'm here on my sign up page, and I've got that component you can see right here on the page. Now, when you go to create your account, we're going to have an auth action and we're going to need the email and password fields. So if I go into this email field, you're going to see that we've got widget state. And now we have this diamond icon, which indicates that this is coming from a component. And if we twirl this open, we can see the widget states in that component, our email and our password. That's coming from this first text field and the second text field. Before this update, you didn't have access to these, so they couldn't be part of your component design system. So now your design system is much more complete. Or let's take another example. So here I've got an order page where you're ordering your drink and you select how much milk you want, how much sugar, and how many espresso shots. So you go in and you select from these dropdowns. The price will be dynamically updated here, and then you'll just swipe up to complete your order. Now, these dropdowns right here are components. We've got them styled how we want them. And if we came in here to our text and see what we have available to us, once again, we've got our widget state and we've got all of our dropdowns accessible to us. That is, we're accessing the widget state of our dropdown components outside of the component inside the page where we're working. And of course, each of these dropdowns would be dynamic because we would set parameters to send into them different data, milk for this one, types of sugar for this one, and espresso shots. So now your components can be much more dynamic and you can develop them much faster. Second, you now have three types of state variables instead of just the one local state variables. We now have app state variables, that was the old local state, page variables, and component variables. Let me show you how they function. So the first one is the app variables. And once again, this is just the old local state variables. That is, the scope of these variables, where you have access to them, is anywhere in your app. But the two additional ones we've added are page variables, and these will be accessible only on the page on which you set them up. And finally, component variables. And the scope of these are only inside the components where you declare them. This allows you to define variables only in the scope where it's necessary, not polluting the global scope and handling state cleanly and efficiently. This means that in larger or more complex apps, you won't have like a million local state variables that you have to look through. Let me show you a few examples. Here, I've got a component that's a text field input. You would use these on a form. This is where a user puts in information. And here, I'm using two component state variables to handle validation. That is, when whatever the user types in doesn't pass whatever rules I've set up for a valid input, I'm gonna change the style, a red border around this. And I'm handling this through these local state variables. Now, this is a small little function, and it would be annoying to have these two variables in my app state right here, because all they're doing is handling a little piece of validation on one component. And with this new update, we can now localize them to the scope where they're needed. Next, let's look at a page state variable. Here, we've got a Spotify redesign done by one of our great Flutterflow users. It's available in the marketplace. And we've got this custom nav set up at the bottom where you click on it and you're shown different content. So your favorites, user account information, and the general feed. Now, this is one page in Flutterflow, and this is a perfect example of a good use case for a page state variable because the variable only makes sense, only is used on this page. So it wouldn't make sense for it to exist on 
every page in the app. So right now it's using local state or app state as it's now called, and let's migrate it over to a page state variable. So here's the page and all the content is in a stack right here and it's being handled by a current index variable. I'll show you it right here and we can see it, it's living in here in our app state. So let's come over to our page. And if we click on the main root widget, you can see this icon right here, state management. So if we go in there, we can add a field and let's call it current page index. And we'll set it to an integer and set our initial value to zero because we want the first option to show up. Let's confirm that we can close it. And now we can just go replace the current variable it's using for a page state. So we come in here, it's referencing this current index, which is an app state variable, but we want a page state. And so we'll just switch that out and do this for the rest of them. Now that that's set up, we can delete that app state variable because we're not using it anymore. There are a couple other places where this variable would have to be changed, but it's the same as these. And that's how easy it is to switch out your variables for ones in a better scope. Third, we've separated out pages and widgets into a model class and a widget class that makes the code much more accessible. So let's go into code view and you can see we've got this tab now available where we can select whether we want it to render the widget or the model code. And when you copy it, it'll copy whichever is selected. Let us know if you have any questions about these new state management upgrades and send us a link if you're building something cool. As always, leave any questions or comments below and we'll see you in the next video.